Joining with one. me today is Dorky Dad, and we're going to talk about <laughs> Old Man Logan being absolutely bonkers. So if you watched the tournament yesterday, you may very well have gotten the wrong idea about Old Man Logan. Is this correct? <laughs> This is not correct. He's so busted with his turn meter gain on hit. It's crazy. So this is a public service announcement that the gameplay that you saw yesterday may not be the way that it actually works on Friday, nor should it, correct? It shouldn't. It would make him too good. It would make him above Apocalypse, above Black Knight, possibly yes. above Scroll. Like, it's just too much turn meter. Yeah, we're talking like if they leave it the way it was working yesterday in the tournament, potentially could be a Super Scroll level powered character, which I don't know if that's healthy for the game. So we're going to talk about that and a bunch of other things that we learned from the tournament. First things first, the tournament was... An amazing experience if you did not already do so there was a code cc envoy 3 million gold 250 uh training modules and power cores which is okay right but that's i'll take it right bonus stuff is bonus stuff yeah, and 100%. this was a preview to season eight which we were beta testing there were some bugs and there's some glitches and we didn't know how the room rolls and a big shout out to Dulum, who ended up winning the whole tournament he went three and zero and then you, myself, and Updog went two and one. I believe Updog ended up having more points than you, and then I ended up placing in fourth. Good experience, right? Was a, It was a blast, right? Oh, it was so much fun. I, I really, really hope we do another one. I hope we can get some other uh, involved as well, because I know everyone kind of wants to be a part of them. It was a great time. All right, so let's talk about the problem with Old Man Logan. Um, mm. Explain the problem real quick. So that part where it says on attack fill speed bar for self, if you were to downgrade that ability a bit, I think it's at level two, it says when old man Logan's attack, like when attacked on self, fill speed bar. Well, that's not how it was working on the playtest during that tournament. Um, the reason I lost is because I decided I'm not going to hit him. That's the reason I brought in Fury and Phoenix because they don't do damage like AoE or anything like that. I'm going to wait until Doom Lults and then I'm just going to clear him and it's going to be great. So I hit Panda Pool. And the second I hit Panda Pool, Old Man Logan said, hold my beer, that's my fluffy monster, and I'm going to kill you. And that's what he does. So he is now gaining, at this moment, 20% speed bar when any ally is hit. Not, Doesn't need to be Mercs for Mouth. Not Mercs for m Money. Anybody. Yeah. Anybody. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah, and so he's getting 20% speed bar every single time you do any sort of attack. And then he gets it when he does his own attack assist or in his basic so he's just and he gets 30 percent speed when there's a bleed and he's doing his own bleeds he is just taking far too many turns this is just one step too far you know they said they want to step away from the speed meta well this is jumping fully into the speed meta if this were to be the case and i believe their intent was it to work like this in war only but this yeah. and maybe only with the mercs for money team but the way that it is coded right now makes him plug and play insane everywhere. You already said it. Probably on the order of Super Scroll. Better than yeah. better than Apocalypse Black Knight. So uh what we're trying to say right here is this is not correct. And the footage was borked. And basically oh, yeah. the footage the, the event you know, so that we played the event, you know, it was for fun. It was a tournament. It wasn't you know he doesn't come into the game till tomorrow something's gonna happen with this so if if you were solely buying old man logan based off the footage shown yesterday that's not correct it's gonna be changed something's gotta actually i think it's too good to be true right i mean i know some people say oh, i'll just leave it that way but i think that's gonna be very no. disruptive that'd be very no. very disruptive you cannot leave it this way because you know what happens a year from now there's an old man logan on every raid node there's an old man logan in every single dark dimension node there's three old man Logans in the last floor of Sword Satellite, okay? You do not want it to be like this. If anything, you were talking about this, how it's probably their use in war was balanced around this. You want to make it for a war tag to give the mercs for money people this effect, but just them and just in war. Otherwise, it's going to be absurd. It's going to be used against us to the highest degree down the road. Right, right, right. All right, let's talk about other things that we learned inside of the event. And I'll go first. How about that? Room one was perceived as being kind of an anti-cabal room. 
which mm-hmm. was not true, <laughs> right? You know, it says on turn, clear vulnerable from self and heal 20% of max health for each vulnerable move that way. Characters of vulnerable gain 25% resistance. And the idea there is Iron Patriot's kit applies vulnerable on spawn, and then all kinds of awesome things happen when characters, enemies have vulnerable. Extra damage, um, mostly no speed bar, right? That's the main yeah. thing. Vulnerable's not king speed bar. So the idea going into the tournament is like, ah, put whatever team that you don't want to get messed with with Cabal in room one. So my bright thinking was to put Mercs for Money with Super Scroll in one. And Updog says, no way, loser. Uh, did you <laughs> see this clip right here where basically... He takes in Cabal with Apocalypse and Emma, and I just get, get completely r- rolled. Explain what's going on here. Yeah, so because the the vulnerable is on spawn, it does stop the scroll on spawn speed bar. And so as long as you get to go first, the damage from Cabal, everything that they do just completely annihilates the Mercs for money team. Like old man Logan, he's also not getting that speed bar we were just talking about because he also has the the vulnerable. And because that team is innately slow until they get rolling, it's an easy clap for Cabal. Like Cabal will be a hard countered Mercs for money. I hope that's not needed, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, because so that then what I learned from that is that, um, you know, maybe putting Noir with uh, Mercs for Money is probably just as strong as putting Super Scroll because then you could put Super Scroll somewhere else and then someone's got to decide yeah. where they're going to take their Cabal, right? It becomes, you know, like a hard decision when you split them up. So yeah, that's what I learned in Room 1. Do you have any other thoughts about Room 1 and what went on there? Old Man Logan sucks. I hate him. Okay, yeah, that's he's really good. Stage 2. So... There's two things I learned in stage two, which was blood transfusion on defense and offense. All characters on turn gain bleed. On characters with bleed gain 5% damage per bleed. When applying bleed, gain defense up. And so initially there was some questions about Robbie Reyes and whether or not the room buffs were actually going to trigger his passive, which Mm -hmm. is when bleed is applied to an enemy fill speed bar. Now, we didn't actually know, right? We had to like research this quite a bit. And yep. what what did we what did we come to the conclusion on this? Yes, the room does indeed give him speed bar. Yeah, as you're going to show right here. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. Let's see if I've got this. Um, so Juggernaut goes right there, and then you can see the blue speed bar. It happened really quickly, but that is what's happening. Uh, I'll put it on a slower speed. So. Um, this was kind of a hassle to get this footage, by the way. We did find it, but yeah, it, it does it does do what we it does work, right? So that's a good thing, right? So Robbie is now a good option in in room two. What do you think? Well, I see this as a net negative because maybe it's gonna make the secret defender team beat the new warriors, and the new warriors just keep getting slapped around every single season by one little change here, one little change there. But uh, it is cool that it's going to give Robbie some great plug and play value there or just with his team. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, it is working. So the other thing that I discovered is that uh, Iron Man Zombie passive, of course, works with bleed. And mm-hmm. this does not work well on defense because then you leave yourself open to a lot of silliness with, let's say, hive mind. But I mm-hmm. actually had good luck with undying on offense and it doesn't trigger on the turn that it's applied, but it's still there for the turn afterwards. Does that make sense? So it's it's not as good one as one would think, but it was still pretty effective. Just getting more bleeds out there with Zombie Iron Man is a good thing, right? Yeah, it, it guarantees that every single enemy on the field is going to have a bleed after their first turn. That's, that's going to be always a good thing with Zombie Iron Man out there. Okay. Uh, room three, which it, it turned out to be a nothing burger. Like we, I kind of felt that way. I think you did too, uh, where yeah. there's a, a mechanic with exposed. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but any team, any defensive team with Nightcrawler gets a minuscule advantage. I mean, it's a, no- is, this is a nothing room. It really is a nothing room, right? I mean, there's just yeah, nothing. There's- 
too few characters are exposed. Yeah. There's too few characters. And then the thing is, is that Super Scroll, so you say, oh, I'll put Super Scroll there. The thing about Super Scroll, he's probably better in room six, which we'll talk about in a second, or somewhere else, or on offense. But I don't think it merits, like, always put Super Scroll in this room or always put Vol. I mean, it was just kind of nothing at the end of the day. Yeah. Now, room four... Um, I think the winner in my book on room four was, and this is on turn, clear all negative effects from characters, a turn in, gain defense down, attack down, slow and disrupted. Um, the big winner for me there was Spider Society. And uh, what, what was your take on that room there? Yeah, so any any team that's going to clear the debuffs and then give themselves immunity before their first turn ends, I really like there. So like Mercs for Money was good there. Spider Society is good there, especially because Spider Society is just a very punishing team as is. They are incredible the way that they play. They are they're better than extreme on both offense and defensive now. So they've unseated the extreme as being the best uh balanced raid team, if you will. And they're gonna be just fantastic in that room for those reasons and yeah peter b parker he's gonna be giving them immunity uh and making sure that they're all cleansed up from the first attack so it's pretty impressive and peter b parker has that super annoying passive heal it's super annoying i mean it's it's hard to get around anyways spider yep. society is turning out to be much better than we initially thought there was a couple things that happened to spider society after we did our initial reviews on the playtest server and and our real world experience is that they are the best raid team on their individual basis in other game modes i mean that you know that's what i'm saying right as far as yeah using them by themselves outside of raids they're the best team and so like on my new player account uh my default go-to was extreme and if I had better access to stars on Spider Society, I would actually be going that direction right now. It's a very strong team. Oh, yeah. It's an incredibly strong team and so much value, especially with the new spotlight raids coming up. So they've, they've given us way more reasons than we would ever need to invest in this team, which is good because it's nice to have like a no-brainer investment option. Okay, so we didn't talk about this a lot between us. Stage 5, I'll be back on defense and offense villain characters. On spawn game, revive once with 50% max health. And there was some question on whether or not Black Cat was going to work there. And um, how do I word this? It does work, but it doesn't work. Does that make, is that the best way to describe it? Explain why it works, but it doesn't work. So it, it does work in the sense that there is a check to take the revives off, which is different than when it does it in war. When the war rules were giving revives to rebirth, it didn't do the check. In Crucible, it is, but it's doing a couple checks. It's checking for dodges. If it dodges, then the revive will stay. It's checking for resistance. If it's resisted, then the revive is going to stay. Doesn't mean uh, she's not going to be a phenomenal tool to put in that room, though. Um, yeah. I had her come in on an enemy team and absolutely demolish my superior six because not only did she take the revives off, but she got hit enough and her passive popped off. She got retaliates and she obliterated people. So she's going to be very interesting this season to see if she ends up on the defensive side to prevent enemy uh, villain teams, or if she's going to stay on the offensive side to kind of deal with people trying to stack that room with strong villain characters. Yeah, I did take Black Cat on offense versus Superior. It's Superior Six seemed to be everywhere in Room Five, right? Yeah. That I think yeah. that was the logical team to put in Room Five on defense with Superior Six because they're very punishing, right? And the but the, it it was an RNG check on who got the revives and um you know getting through Green Goblin and not got getting stuck behind a taunt, you know, and so on was was kind of problematic and i think if i played it more than once i would have got a different result each time it was just completely random uh so uh, i think that it, this i don't know what to do with this yet i i feel like we're gonna we're, well more will be revealed right yeah yeah for, of course and then room six um is probably in my opinion the biggest wild card room in the entire event and i feel like there's a lot more that can happen and we've seen rooms like this before on uh, on all characters after using um ultimate ability spread all positive effects to adjacent allies so that's like that butterfly effect right um mm -hmm. ultimate abilities cost two less ability energy the only thing i learned in there is that um uh, infinity watch actually was pretty good there what, what was your takeaway with that room yeah, I really like the Infinity Watch in there because uh, Nebula goes so fast and she spreads speed plus all her immunity and defense up to his adjacent. 
So I was putting Nebula beside Quicksilver in there. Had some pretty good success. I actually caught a win on my first round with that one. Um, and, and so we've we've seen this ultimate abilities uh, cooldown lessened um, in many different ways, right? Yes. But now that it's also doing the butterfly effect, I think we're going to see even more creativity in this room. This room, I think, by the end of the season, might be the most interesting room based on, like, you know, Thanos. He gets a billion buffs. Now he's ulting turn two, and he's spreading all those buffs. Quicksilver, you know, he's going to get a bunch of buffs before his turn, and then he's going to ult. He's going to spread all his buffs at some point. So I think there's yeah. going to be a lot of creativity in this room. It's going to be, like, protect the buff giver who also has an interesting ultimate available either turn one or turn two. And we're going to go from there. Uh, you were talking about Skrull in this room. I think Skrull with any other team but Hive Mind would be a bad idea here. Now hear me out. Because you go back to the Apocalypse Doom team, right? Apocalypse Doom against a Skrull who else turn one. All of a sudden, Doom survives that that big boom. And now he's bringing Apocalypse for the ride. And then it's over. Mm -hmm. But with Hive Mind, Skrull goes boom people drop to 30 percent it doesn't matter if doom gets his 50 percent speed bar because the second two people drop to red on the hive mine they gain 60 percent and it's off to the races for them it's it's going to be a, a bloodbath if you start seeing yeah. that in there and then a strong mercs for money team in stage one whew, it's yeah so so you're saying that the the easy thing is to do infinity watch quicksilver but the the choose violence I hate the world plan would be hive mind and super scroll in room six. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> so, uh, that's all we had. We, I had a great time yesterday. I, I feel like, uh, I just wanted to get the word out on old man. Logan is going to see some sort of revision to the way that it actually works and, or the text. My hope for what they do is that they, change it so that it only happens in war with the mercs for money team is my hope yeah definitely my hope too after what it did to me i'm scarred for life and so is my lego batman lego batman he's he's in pieces both figuratively and literally and i just wanted to thank you for one of the more memorable clips i've ever seen in my life um i'm not gonna play it here because of the profanity i'm gonna play it do you want to do you want to <laughs> should i play it Oh God! Oh God! I'm playing right, sure. it. I don't care. Oh, holy shit, we can't win. We're gonna lose. So the the reasoning for he's the doing so much damage. Yeah, no fucking the, way. The fun stuff's on the clip. Yeah. <laughs> this fucking character's stupid. No way. Who took two turns in a row? We didn't clear. Oh no. What the fuck? What the fuck? No way. Oh. I lost round one to that. I lost round one to that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck! Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, I play like this. I totally what the get it. Fuck is old man Logan's kid? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You we lost for the moment. Here, here comes my favorite moment. Uh, oh, oh my god! Holy fuck, Boom! <laughs> <laughs> RIP headphones. These are not the same headphones. <laughs> There's no shot. We actually can't win. Rip headphones. Oh, I got to say, um, they, here's the thing, though, is if you didn't care about the game and you didn't want to win, that wouldn't have happened. And that's the way I play the game. And I'm glad that there's footage of it for myself. I just think it was the best thing. It was the highlight of the entire tournament. All right. Head over to Dorky's channel. We're going to talk about something different over there. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep on gaming. Bye for now.